fender rolling 101. If you want to take your fenders from looking like this to this, stay tuned. I'll show you exactly what to do. It's about that time for the Miata to drop a little bit lower in preparation for track use. So we're gonna roll the fenders so that we have no rubbing issues. Welcome to my channel, Drive It Ryan. Today I'm gonna to show you exactly how to roll fenders on your car and I'm gonna make it straightforward, simple and easy to follow. We'll get it done real quick so you could go and attempt it yourself. So if you're new to my channel, uh, check out some of my other videos. I got Project Miata here. The M3, bunch of car stuff. I'm, I'm a car nut, so check out some of my other videos and let's get right to this job. So the fenders in stock form is like a 90 degree, so like this. So you wanna roll the fenders in very, very small adjustments. So you adjust the roller to go a little bit at a time until you pinch the weld, or pinch the fender, I mean. So it's kinda Fold it over on each other nice and flat. Once it's flat, once the lip is flat and pancake together, then if you need to make more adjustments, you can put a little pressure on the fender roller to pull the fenders a little bit outwards. That's if you have real meaty fitment. But I'm not gonna do that too much with this car because I wanna keep my stock fender liners and I'm not going crazy. I want function over form for this car because going to be going to the track a lot so really I just don't want any rubbing I want to retain my fender liners and that's it so that's the goal so three out of these four fenders are done um, this is the last one so I'll set the camera up and I'll try and show you as best I can what I'm doing so you really only need like three tools to roll fenders first thing you're gonna need is a heat gun nothing fancy as long as it throws heat. This was, I don't know, 20 bucks, 30 bucks maybe. But I'll link all these tools below so you can get them yourself. So a heat gun, um, gonna put it on the lowest setting because we only need this to get to about 120 degrees. I'll explain that in a second. You're gonna want, well, you know, thanks to COVID, I guess we all have these, little thermometers. I don't know how accurate these are, but as long as it's within like 10, 15 degrees, that, that's fine. Um, so yeah, you need that. And then the fender roller itself. And I'll show you how to use this device. Ow. So the first step before you do anything, jack the car up, take the wheel off, and mount your fender roller. So this fender roller has a bunch of different options for different bolt patterns. This one's by Schwaben. Uh, Eastwood is a good one, I've used that. Uh, they're all pretty much the same. Some are built a little better than others. I like this one though. You mount it right where your wheel would mount. And then most fender rollers give you like little conical bushings, little washers. So you can put your stock lug nuts on. Just like you're bolting your wheel down. So snug it up. Probably don't need three, but I mean, probably don't need all four or five. But I like to get it nice and evenly tight all the way around so there's no wobble. Cause we'll be going back and forth with this thing many times. Many, many times. Oh my God. Rotor was frozen cause I washed it and parked it. I'll show you how to operate this. So there's basically three different adjustments and the key with rolling fenders is knowledge. The key with rolling fenders is small adjustments at a time. So we'll start at the top here. So this, if you loosen it, it moves the, that moves the, the head back and forth. Then this knob moves this up and down so you can adjust it according to your ride height. 
So here's a little pro tip. Roll the fenders before you lower the car because with a lot of these, they're almost too long straight from the factory. So I'm rolling this at stock ride height with the stock suspension. And this is completely bottomed out. So if I have to do it again, I might have to, oh, don't wanna let it go. I might have to cut and weld and make this a little bit shorter. So yeah, that knob, adjust this up and down. And then you have this adjustment, which brings the whole thing this way or that way. So it puts more pressure on the fender or less. And um, yeah, so that's how it operates. So I'm gonna start the heat gun up and get my thermometer ready. Put it on object setting, because it's not a body. And we're gonna heat it up to approximately 120 degrees Fahrenheit. That is the best temperature to make the paint and the metal malleable. That's the key word of the day. Knowledge. Malleable. You don't wanna melt the paint, but you don't want the paint to be cold because that's when it can crack. And once it's cracked, well, it's not in the world. You could fill it in with touch-up paint, but you really don't wanna crack the paint. This is kind of a tough job to film, but I got the fender roller set up on the lip. And like I said, I'm just gonna go little by little by little until the lip rolls flat and just adjust accordingly. That's it. Heat gun's on the high fan speed and the lowest temperature. You wanna heat it up? Put this up a little bit. Right now, it's at 91 degrees. We're gonna get it to 120. Heat is absolutely crucial here. Hundred and eight. Hundred and twenty. Very small adjustments. Back and forth. Keeping heat on it. A little more. So I've been working at this little by little and we're almost vertical here with the fender roller and just about done. I think I'm gonna call it quits before I push this paint any farther, but the lip's looking pretty good on this side. Um, so yeah, that, that's it. All four are done. We're ready to install the coilovers next. Can't wait. Plenty of clearance back here in the rears. We're good to go. Thank you for tuning in. Hope you all enjoyed this video and learned something. Fender rolling, it's, it's really pretty easy. You just gotta be very, very patient. Make sure everything's up to temp, 120 degrees, and that's it. Just keep working at it until you get it where you want it. So if you wanna follow along with the build, don't forget to subscribe to my channel, Drive It Ryan and like, comment, engage with me as much as possible. And I got a track day in a day. Well, today's Thursday, I have a track day Saturday. So I got to do coilovers, get the diff filled up with fluids. <sighs> got to do brakes, got a lot to do. So see you in the next one.